Um, first of all, I want you to know, if you don't know about Running USA, we are the National Trade Association for the sport in the United States, and data is central to what we do. So uh, this study that we have co-produced with, um, with Chris and with MPA um, really is the first of its kind. Um, and we're releasing the results here today first. The full report, um, unfortunately, we can't go through all of that um, this afternoon, but it is available for, for purchase. Um, and we'll cover the headlines uh, today. Um, so a little bit about uh, the background. We've been working on this study uh, for the last uh, probably five or four months or so. Um, and we did uh, a deep dive on looking at demographics, sports participation, technology, runner profiles, um, runner and event preferences, motivations uh, for people, why they begin running, why they stay running, why they enter an event. Um, we also looked at social media usage. And then today what we'll do is we'll also compare those results a little bit with runners in, in the United States. Um, like I said, we did also uh, speak with more than 1,000 runners uh, in this uh, Asian region. We also worked with a PhD in uh, statistics to be able to ensure that there was not one geographic weight over another. So um, we had respondents from China, Japan, India, Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore, um, and several other countries. So today what we'll do is we will cover, um, unfortunately, just a few of those. We'll go over the overall demographics and the motivation factors. Uh, we'll look at gender and generational differences. Factors that drive event participation. Why do runners enter events? Um, how do those runners in Asia compare to runners in the United States? And a little bit about what it all means. So demographically, it's interesting. There were some surprises in, this, in these results, and there were some that were not surprising. Um, but demographically, runners in Asia very much follow patterns to what we find in the United States, with one key exception, uh, well, in several areas. But in one key area in particular, runners in Asia are dominated by men. 63% of runners here in the Asian region are male. That's compared to, in the United States, 56% of runners in the US are female. Now, in both geographies, in Asia and the United States, most runners are young. Um, however, in Asia, nearly 2 thirds of the runners are 25 to 44 years old. That number is only 50%, and just barely 50% in the United States. And finally, there's another interesting difference that uh, is that in the United States, 68% of the runners are married. Here, that number is just around 50%. Now, that might be impacted based on the uh, more percentage of runners in Asia are younger. Um, so um, it was just something that we found when we were going through the data that we thought might be a little interesting. Now, why are these important? I always try and like to, to try and close the loop when we talk about statistics because people can find statistics interesting and, and you know, kind of curious, but how does it really apply to what everyone does in, in this room? Um, really, the importance, just like everyone has said, is being able to tie the demographics back to your sponsors, to your event, um, and how you might be able to tailor your messages to them. Um, in particular, with looking at the, and you layer on top of these demographics of, of youth, education, and, and income, they're highly, highly desirable for sponsors. So let's look now at what motivates runners, people to actually start running, as well as people to continue running. On the left side are the motivations for people, why people in Asia begin to run. The right column is why people continue to run. It's interesting when we looked at the results here that runners in Asia are much more motivated, even more so than in American runners, to start and keep running based on health concerns. And earlier this morning when 
We heard Tech Lin from Sports Singapore talk about the importance of having a healthy community, a healthy society, and getting people moving. Um, that very much is bearing out in the results from this report. Um, the general sense of getting and staying healthy, not, the, not excluding the, the reason for losing weight, um, are really the number one appeal for people to start running in Asia. When you compare that over to the United States, only 8% of runners in the United States cite the reason of getting healthy in order to start running. Americans are much more weight conscious. I think there's enough studies out there to talk about and demonstrate obesity levels and, and so forth. Um, in the US, though, the number one reason for people to start running is weight. Now, once people start running, the motivation to continue running are roughly the same in Asia and in the United States. But again, there's a greater motivation in Asia for people to stay healthy. You look at it, and the report there says 51% cite the reason to stay healthy versus in the United States, that number is only 39%. One of the factors that I always look at, I think is kind of interesting, are, are twofold. One is uh, when you ask people about entering a race. A lot of times people say, I want to enter a race. That's my goal for starting to run. Or to continue to run, I want to do another distance, maybe something longer, something with a group, something for a charity. Um, but it's interesting when you look for the, the reasons for continuing to run, entering a race in Asia is down to number five. Um, and then another one that I didn't do quite the, the comparison on, but I, I have the reports with me if anyone's interested, is uh, the answer to the question of because I like it. I don't think that, you know, we, people should like doing this. There's millions of people around the world doing this, and because I like it is not number one. That always kind of, I think it's kind of interesting. So again, why are these insights so important? Knowing and understanding the motivations of why people want to start and then to continue participating in the sport can help you guide the way your messages are and to help you develop your communication strategy. I was struck by what Lizzie from Octagon said this morning about hunting for those stories. If there are keen, understandable insights with health and becoming and staying healthy that aren't weight related, maybe those are areas that you want to go and look at as you develop your communications. So let's look at some gender differences. Mostly these are the same uh, from the US to, to Asia. Um, and these are broad generalizations, so I don't want to anyone to believe that these are the, um, these are, you know, 100% for uh, true for your organization. But broadly, in the, in the people that we surveyed, we found that women are more likely to see themselves as a jogger, a recreational runner, uh, versus classifying themselves as a competitive runner. There seems to be more modesty uh, among that gender um, in this region. Um, they happen to be um, more weight conscious than um, men. Um, and they're also much more active, much more likely to be active on social media and tend to prefer to run more in groups. Um, and they also tend to respond more favorably when an event, quote unquote, sounds fun. Now, men, on the other hand, um, again, this can be a little stereotypic, uh, but men are also, more, they're more likely to set a goal. They're more likely to say, I'm going to enter and finish a marathon or enter and finish a specific distance or to what Tim was saying earlier, set a goal to run six majors. Um, they're much more likely than women to, to set those goals, to be more competitive, to view themselves as more competitive, and also to have a greater interest and greater participation with technology, whether that's heart monitors, GPS uh, devices, um, apps, you know, those types of things. Now, we didn't just find differences in, in gender. We also found differences among generations. So when you look at, at some of the interesting divides between those that were born in between 1946 and 1964, baby boomers on the left, or those that were compared to born after 1981, commonly known as millennials, 
So baby boomers, and again, this might not be uh, terribly breaking news to, to folks, but it bears out in, in the statistics. Baby boomers are much more likely to be traditionalists. They're more comfortable in participating in events that they're familiar with, that they're comfortable with, that they're aware of, and they're also less likely to increase the number of events that they plan to participate in going forward. So basically, they repeat the patterns that they've already created. One thing that did stand out among this generation is things that are things that are convenient or things that are quote pretty. So a scenic course for this generation is also um, very impactful for making their decisions of, of participating. Now on the right side of the screen, you can see that the millennial runners are much more casual and they're much more cost sensitive. They prefer social media channels um, to be able to communicate with, and, uh, with event organizers, whereas baby boomers are much more preferred to have email communication. The interesting thing here is that the millennials are also much more optimistic about the future. They're, while they may not plan terribly far in advance, they're very optimistic and, and indicate that they plan to increase the number of events that they're going to participate in in the year ahead. And when we looked at the data here, it was interesting to know and understand that in runners in Asia actually in 2018 entered on average nine events. In 2019, they plan to increase that to 10 events. Compared to the United States, the number is still growing. Uh, however, those numbers are lower. In the United States, in, in 2018, they entered eight events, and they plan to do nine events next year. So again, that these insights hopefully can be applied to your marketing messages. And hopefully, you'll be able to uh, use some of these statistics to help with that. To wrap up, we have just one more slide here. We w I thought it would be important to look at the top 10 reasons or factors that drive runners to enter an event in Asia. So the top 10 factors, as you can see, some are in your control as event organizers, um, and some obviously are not. Um, but the things that can be in your control Obviously, you can't control if runners are going to remain healthy or injury-free, um, or that maybe you have a convenient location based on where they live or work. But there are factors that are directly in your control, things that um, you can see how important they are. For instance, offering a distance that people <coughs> excuse me, a distance that people prefer. Is your event offering things? Are you able to really control costs? And looking at, I think it was 79% of uh, cost was a, a, you know, one of the top 10 reasons that people in Asia factor into whether or not they're going to enter an event. So I encourage you to look at those events, uh, or look at those factors rather, and see how they apply to your events and um, how you might be able to maximize the results. So I had 15 minutes right after lunch. Um, it goes by really quickly. I wanted to, to let you know, obviously remind you, we touched on some just really high level insights. The entire report is available um, on our website at runningusa.org. Um, we do also have a, a packaged report if you would like to purchase the, the results from the Asian study compared to uh, the results of the American study that we do each year. Um, I'm going to be here able to answer questions, and we just really um, hope that you can apply some of these highlights and insights to your business, and I really appreciate the opportunity to be here. Thank you.